um, talking about getting spoiled with uh, the old Berlin. There was a really cool thread that popped up on the Techno subreddit, which I recommend. I was, I've seen. I reckon I've ch- told you guys already check out beforehand, but definitely check out the Techno subreddit if you're you know that way inclined and you like electronic music as much as I do. You like going out as much as I do. Check it out because there's this really cool thread that someone spoke about that kind of got me thinking about myself as well, right in that regard. Um, where is it? You get spoiled. Duh, 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 duh. Let me see if I can find it. It's a really cool thread that someone's speaking about, about getting spoiled. But, but what is it? It's a cool thread. It's like 100 something comments. I feel like I should have saved it earlier. Aye, aye, aye. Where are you? Review. Where is it? It's not about being spoiled. Nope, it's not there. Maybe second page. See if I can find it. Bear me one second. Ba 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 ba. Yeah, there we go. The Berlin scene kind of ruined it for me, right? So this is a really cool thread on the subreddit that I think you should really check out. I I think so personally. I think it's a really very very informative and kind of gets at the heart of how hard it is to kind of you know um go to Berlin once and ever be the same. Oh, there's an actual. Oh, you know what? Um, have you have you guys seen this? This is what I always do all, all the time when I'm ever about to go to Bergheim. I'll go and uh, refresh the Berlin location on Instagram and see what videos people are posting. Um, to see, there's always videos people post in the Bergheim with you know with a sticker on their phone, of course, just kind of taken in the background noise, which is always quite cool. Um, let's see what people have got this time around. Can you hear that? Wee 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 wee. You just can't you can't buy that sound, and it sounds so much better in there. Like it sounds amazing through this anyway, in general. But look at that, everyone saying Berlin best party. People. Just getting, just being excited. Look at that, the black space. Just amazing, isn't it? Really, you can't buy it. Oh wow, look at that. Look at that AR Bergheim building. I wonder how they do that. The closing, again, just just an absolute epic place. You can't buy it. Look at the look at the happy faces in there. Twenty eight hours dancing they did. I cyber got but yeah. So that's that's a cool thing. Anyway, let's go back to the article at at, at choice. So um, this is a good core thread that I thought was really interesting and kind of got speaking about what I was kind of thinking about a few weeks ago about my kind of going out habits and how I want to kind of change things around and, you know, and it also kind of got me thinking about the stuff that I want to do in terms of being financially independent, I have my own business and that's all malarkey. You have to kind of make some sacrifices here and there. I mean, DJing, you have to kind of be a little bit um, stricter with how you spend your kind of free time. Uh, so my crisis confidence came in terms of just like realizing that maybe all these kind of local club nights I'm going to that don't really have a high production value that, you know, essentially uh, what I used to do back in the day with the night so special I used to run in, um, or I used to co-run in the Alibi uh, a long time ago. It's just, you know, you kind of making a flyer online, getting booking some DJs, paying the money and then getting them to play in the bar that you're playing in, right? Or the bar that you kind of quote unquote hired for the night. So there's not much kind of effort that goes into those kind of nights, right? And the usually DJs you're getting are kind of up and coming. They're not really, you know, of that level that you'd kind of want to maybe go out your way to go see. But when you go to like an actually, and then plus add the caveat onto it, I'm actually aspiring to de- be a DJ myself, right? In that regard, have that kind of be one of the kind of um, tools in my arsenal. So with that, you kind of, because you're exposed to that in that regard, you kind of want to go to a night and get inspired and get motivated. You don't want to go somewhere and be like, oh, I could, play much better than this right that's not the kind of feeling you want you want to go somewhere and feel as if the person is showing you just how far away you are from that level right so that you've got something to aim for you don't want to go to a nightclub and just feel like oh this guy's this guy or girl is horrible so i'm thinking you know what maybe i should be spending more of my money going to actual expensive production field club nights like the stuff that crank brothers do the stuff that secret sundays do the stuff that um you know world unknown do the stuff that body hammer do like actual nights that i put on that are actually you know high production value or the stuff even that fold where there's always kind of big lineup djs playing go to that instead of going to like, the local club things because that's that's where the kind of real vibes are so with that this thread kind of got to the heart of it and really spoke to me in that regard and i think it's something that i hopefully if some of you guys will probably uh identify with as well in some regards so this is a friend on this techno subreddit it's titled the berlin scene kind of ruined it, uh, everything else for me and it's kind of very very eye-opening i thought in that regard um let's read it so this is the following i don't want to sound snobby or elitist but after going to berlin more than 10 times over the past years the last time being this summer for three months i'm having a hard time enjoying myself in other places it's very difficult for me to not to create expectations when i go to other cities hoping that the parties will be remotely comparable to berlin but it's almost never the case which is very true I think you have to kind of be aware of it once you go, 
that this is this is just like an anomaly. It doesn't exist. Even in Germany, there's no other city in Germany that's similar to Berlin. It's just weird, kind of like place on its own. It's kind of caught. It's kind of caught in a time warp. It's a bit, you know, stuck in the past in that regard. How they go and how they act, how they kind of maneuver in a city their views around work-life balance like just in general everything is very very different from any place that you'd be especially in most metropolitan cities so that's the thing you have to kind of get over really quickly because you start tapping into it like well i could live here forever but again i think it's a place that you go for a bit or maybe for a while then you kind of go somewhere else or maybe it's a place that you go to when you're more a bit more mature and you kind of more know where to kind of settle down right but anyway it continues I'm in Amsterdam right now, and I was so excited to go to the school and shelter this past weekend. However, my experiences in these clubs were extremely lacklustre. The clubs themselves were cool, but the crowd was just extremely boring. I thought Amsterdam was supposed to have the second best scene in Europe after Berlin, maybe competing only after London, but again, you high, when you put something on a pedestal and you go there, you know, it's always never the same. To be fair, the school this past Friday was having more of a house disco night. However, I was expecting an interesting mixed crowd, but it wasn't the case. It was just a bunch of young, white, straight guys and girls not even dancing much, hanging out in circles and chatting all the time. Some of them, of course, didn't respect the no photos policy. No crazy outfits, no one dancing their asses off. Everyone was very uptight and reserved. Seeing the toilet stalls vacant all the time without queues is very weird to me. Now, haha, don't even get me started on shelter. The crowd was even worse. They could, I couldn't stay there for two hours the music was good though so that's 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 essentially london usually in on any given night you're gonna get great djs you're gonna get great lineups you're gonna get essentially great programming right but it's just the clubs and the people that you're just it's always a toss-up because london unfortunately with all the licensing laws regulations and all the cutbacks clubs just can't afford to turn people away they just can't they have to let as many people as they can into their clubs so if you let everyone into your clubs because it's gonna happen you know you're going to let some fraff in. It's just, it's just a numbers game. So when the fraff come into the nightclubs, they essentially are more of a... They essentially dictate more of the vibe than anyone else in a nightclub. They dictate all of it. It's, they are responsible for how shit a nightclub is all the time. It's very, very interesting. I've, I've noticed and I guess that's what makes me appreciate Berlin because what they do in Berlin is that, of course, they switch to... They, there's not much of a focus on DJs really because, you know, for the most part, DJs play for like more than three hours. So you're not exactly going there just to see someone play, right? Because in London, you're going, you might go to see a DJ play because he's only going to play for an hour and a half. So you have to really be there from the beginning to end. But you can rock up in the middle of someone's six hour set. It doesn't really matter, right? You're still going to get a good idea of how good they are or not or how much you like them or not, right? So most of the emphasis has been switched around to the actual people inside the club. Or the club itself. That's why they go over the top with all the excess. You know, look at that club like CC Foss, right? So CC Foss in um, Berlin is a good example of it. Bar Twenty Five is gone now, but CC Foss is a good is a good is a good example. CC Foss Club is a really good example of it, of just how crazy looking it looks, right? So this is CC Foss in Berlin when they just kind of go over the top with the interior and add all these kind of extra nonsenses in there, which you know for the most part some people like, some people don't like. But I'll show you what it looks like, right? This is CC Foss in Berlin. This is why they do it because there's a more emphasis on an actual club. So you go in there for a nightclub, you don't really care who's actually playing ZT Force, but it's going to be a good night. It's all kind of laid out really cool. It's a kind of circus vibe, similar to kind of Bar 25, loads of weird haberdash around, no real rhyme or reason around some of the interior design. It's just with the way it is, right? It's all kind of all over the place. And then you kind of look at a place like Cater Blue, which is another good example, right? In Berlin, too. Similar sort of vibe, very kind of, you know haberdashery stuck together pieces and bits and pieces all kind of molded together so you kind of go somewhere like this not because you know ricardo Villalba is going to play there but because it just looks like a cool venue and it's open until eight o'clock in the morning right that's kind of what they've done really great at so with that you're going to make sure people that are in there are a1 so that's a one thing you get about london great lineups but in, and unfortunately the people that go in the clubs are just Maybe it's the education, maybe it's the fact that the licensing laws are where they are, maybe it's the kind of culture of, you know, getting fucked up before you go to a nightclub. Like, for instance, with a burger kind of me going beginning of October, right? I just cannot, I cannot afford to be hung up. I cannot afford to be drunk at a burger. I just can't afford to be drunk. I can't. If I want to go in and I want to be successful getting in there, I have to be completely stone cold sober. So I'm going to get in, I'm going to go to the burger kind. Well, I have to be, um, I have to not be high, essentially, right? I'll go to the fucking burger kind at what, 1 a.m., right? maybe with a couple of beers in me that I've kind of had on the way there and that's it right and which is completely the opposite of what I do in London right you go to a nightclub and you're hammered by the time you get in there because you don't want to spend too much money on drinks but in Berlin you've got the added benefit of low ticket entry prices low drink prices everything is kind of set up for you to kind of have a really long uh 
night out, pace yourself in a really good way. And that's something you learn a lot when you get there, right? You start you start going hard the first couple of times I went there, but then you realize, oh no, you have to pace yourself out in Berlin. Anyway, let's continue his article. It's really cool, this guy, what he wrote, right? Um, so he continues here, he says, um, I think I reached a point where um, going so, so solely for the music or Pacific DJ I want to see just doesn't cut it for me. I think a good crowd is 8% of the experience. So that's what I said. A, a good, the crowd is maybe 90% of the experience. The DJs help, don't get me wrong, but the crowd is... If You know what's a good crowd in London? That she's taking that back to talking about Berlin too much. The best place I've seen where it's actually a fucking amazing crowd is Boosie Building um, um, in Peckham. That crowd, especially for the Soul Train night, is so app so cool it's so nice it's fucking awesome i love it there that's one of my favorite places to go to but in um in london to kind of have an actual good neutral night out it's so much fun honestly i implore you to go it's so fun it's really really fun i really really like it um so yeah that's that's where it's only the best place but again that's probably more to do with the area Peckham's probably got a bit more of a mature it's, it's a lot more of a it's more of a eclectic bunch of people they're a bit more it's a bit more range it's not the same kind of people there's the, the ages are a bit different even I remember going on art tours in South London it was a lot better than the ones I went the the kind of the, the gallery openings in London in East London were a little bit you know the same sort of hipsters going there but in South you get different kind of vibe of people in there so again that kind of works for me um Blah, blah blah. I know. I know that they, they they try putting stickers on phones and having a door policy. Fold as well is good, does a good job of doing that. Actually, to be fair, I'm gonna be honest. So I'm gonna back them up. Um, door policy. The bouncers were asking questions, and I saw a couple of people getting rejected from the school and shelter. But it's still not remotely comparable. I was also in London a few weeks ago. I had a terrible experience at Corsica, where I almost got kicked out of a club. The bouncers came after me in the toilets and searched me for drugs. Luckily, they didn't find that I had. I left ten minutes later. An absolute mood killer, and will never go back. A club where there's staff watching you all the time is just unthinkable for me now. I think the closest experience to a burn Berlin party was Bassiani, minus the drugs. Also been to clubs, raves and festivals in NYC, in Los Angeles. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure what I want to achieve with this post. I guess it's my frustration talking. Maybe I need a break. I love techno with all my heart, but I think it, I should listen to my uh bedroom listen listen to my into my bedroom for a while or better to save my money and go to berlin again than going out frequently and not having fun does anyone else feel the same p.s don't tell me i'm not get yeah exactly where i place it yeah i agree i feel the same too i've been there myself my friend and again i just think the best way to deal with it is to kind of understand that unfortunately or unf unfortunately unfortunately berlin is an anomaly it's not the it's not the it's, it's the exception, right? It's not the norm. Most cities are not like Berlin. Most cities don't, you know, give nightclubs funds to kind of, you know, soundproof their buildings so they can, you know, make sure that they live uh, cohabitatively really well with their neighbours. They don't do that. Most boroughs, you know, accept the highest bid, get the money in the coffers, land their pockets, tear down the buildings, that actually make the place vibey and, you know, prosperous and just stick another kind of high-rise building there, right? Berlin works hand-in-hand -hand with clubs. They consult, loads of drug awareness programs. It's a completely different culture than anything that we're kind of used to in London here for the most part. So it's anomaly in that regard. But the good thing about it is that it's an anomaly that's fairly easy to get to. It's in, if you live in Europe, it's most trips to go to Berlin, even in the peak seasons, are not going to be more than £200 tickets, right? You can plan them in advance and maybe get them under 150 The one I'm going to now in October is about £50, £60 pounds return, right? Crazy prices you can get, especially outside the summer months. You can go if you want to, right? You just have to kind of, um, you kind of have to make the, you kind of have to make the choice of kind of taking away, um, taking the coins or taking the funds that you would have spent going to Corsica, going to Oval Space, going to Fabric and put that money into kind of maybe going to festivals and seeing some bigger DJs playing and maybe more of a curated space at like Junction 2. One of my best, one of the best festivals I've been to in London, hands down, like maybe the best techno electronic festival I've been to ever. Really amazing, really well done. Great programming, great sound, great organization, just perfect festival. And then spend the other bit of money and go into all the other places that you want to go to. Maybe go and deck mantle, go into Berlin to go visit a couple of times a year. That will probably be a lot more better. And I think if you add actually add up the amount of money you spend going to bars, going to um local nightclubs to go and see the DJs play in venues that you know don't necessarily get the culture, it will probably exceed what you would spend going a couple of trips to Berlin, maybe one in the summer, one in the winter, or maybe three, one in the new year, one in the summer, one in the winter, going to a couple of festivals, right? It'll probably exceed that, I guarantee you. So I guess I would say if if you're out there and you're kind of getting a bit, you know, down with all the whole London stuff, just look at the scenario, what it is, 
London is great for gigs. It's great for those kind of live shows. It's great for DJs in general too. You can go to some big nights out, but try and go to the ones that are actually put on by big promoters that actually know what they're doing, like the Crank Brother guys, right? And they actually put a good night on, like the Nina Kravitz thing I went to and the Wolverine Assembly Hall was absolutely insane, right? They went out. They I'm not sure if they even made any money on that night, right? It was just insane the level of production that went into it. Then going out to like a local nightclub that doesn't really have good sound. They've got a good DJ in, but the culture does. But they don't really get it, right? The security guys don't get it. The bar staff don't get it. No one really gets what's going on in there. And it's just like a bit of an annoyance. And everyone else in there is having fun. But it's just a weird vibe. That's essentially what we see in Berlin. The vibe is the most important thing. But yeah, I've been there. I feel the same. And yeah, the thing that I do is just try and book as many trips as I can to Berlin, man. That's the only thing you can do. Book as many trips as you can to Berlin. Get the fuck out of here. And enjoy yourself over there. And then hopefully with that, you can kind of get a bit of an appreciation. What Be what London has to offer too. London is quite cool in that regard. I think, like I said, every every evening or every weekend you can go and see some of the betty just playing out ever and again it's not it's not it's not berlin it's never going to be berlin but it's you know it is what it is you kind of have to make the best of it i think I've, i'm done with kind of complaining about how shit the berlin how shit the london club nets are compared to like other places i think it's it is it's got its unique perks to it i think and again i still maintain you still get the best a range of music genres to listen to in a night out in london than anywhere else in the in europe i think so um i'm just clicking here on resident advisor i'm going to the 18th right the friday and already um you got you know great lineup already you got aphrodite nick castle playing at e1 you've got um what else what else have you got here you've got bel air and george live playing at the jazz cafe you've got perks playing at Kotsuka studio you got Pete Tong playing at Fabric. You've got Branko and Denga playing at Phonics. You've got Harry Shota playing at Egg. See, just mad lineups out here that are really fucking good. What's the source? No player heard that lineup. Um, you've got Rapture and Cylon playing at Fold. You've got English Disco Lovers at Calf. You've got Pete Rock at XOYO. Come on, man. You know what I mean? You've got Francis De La Garde playing at Pickle Factory all night. Mirren Cab playing at Cell 200. See, oh, you got a Cave Imp Night at Call. Just going, oh, Joy Oberson, Total Freedom, Zakia, Mamma Mia. You've got Inferno at the Yard, super amazing gay night. You've got Disco Odyssey. You've got Pasha Mama, 4th of Anniversary at Mixed Garage. So I think, you look, you've got Crux at Rye Wax. You've got amazing nights that happen in London. you just got to be a bit more resourceful with your time and go there and kind of know how to kind of use it um, in the right way. But yeah. I love London, man. It's not it's not Berlin, don't get me wrong, but Berlin is Berlin because you get to go to Berlin in that regard. So I'm not too mad at it at all. 